right, good evening everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. A quorum being present, uh, the meeting will come to order. Uh, at this point, um, I would ask the chairman of the board of selectmen to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Before I start off the pledge, I'd like to ask that we take a brief moment of silence in honor of Webster Police Detective Cynthia Johnson, who passed away earlier this month after a long, courageous battle with cancer. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. So, uh, 123 people uh, answered the question. So, we have 123 people answered the question. 89% voted yes, and 11% voted no. Yes. Okay. Yes.
There we are, 110 voted yes, 13 voted no. If at any time anybody has any questions as they vote through this, just let me know and we'll stop it and move forward. As I said, we have to all get accustomed to this. Okay, Article 1, the City of the Town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift purchase easement, I'm sorry, purchase eminent domain or otherwise two certain parcels of land with improvements thereon located at 37 Nega Street and 39 Nega Street being shown on Assessor's Map 1, parcels 7 and 8, and described in a deed recorded with the Worcester Registry of Deeds in Books 51954, page 364, 37 Nega Street, and in a deed recorded with said registry in Book 51954, page 362, 39 Nega Street, said acquisition to be funded through the library construction budget as voted on Article 14 of the December 8, 2014 Special Town Meeting and the January 26, 2015 ballot vote or take any action thereon. I have a motion and a second to approve the articles read. Any discussion? Can we postpone for more information, please? No. no. Have a mo motion to postpone for more information? Yes. Or to a later date, what is the actual motion? For more postpone? information. Can you go to the mic and state your address, name and address, please? on Douglas Street, and I'd like to postpone this to get more information about the purchase of the uh, two properties, please. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to postpone to get additional information on the purchase of the two properties. Sorry. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? No. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Uh, if, I, if I could, I'd like to explain the article and perhaps provide all the information that will be requested tonight. But you can this this discussion on so we can explain why you don't want to well postpone. So I, I can go and explain the whole situation now. Uh, we may not need the vote to uh, uh, postpone the vote. So if I uh, if I can start, this is a vote to authorize the town to purchase the two properties. Uh, the funding for these two parcels was already approved in uh, January of 2015, and it's part of the existing project budget. Uh, Mr. Moderator, if you could switch the slide. Uh, this article will address two main issues, or three main issues. First, we have limited parking at the existing park at the existing library. Uh, also, as it's currently designed, if you exit out of the parking lot, uh, the sight lines will be very difficult looking out on the Lake Street, so we want to improve that and make that uh, more safe for the public. Also, the original retaining wall is designed, uh, will need some uh, uh, changes to make it sufficient for the current uh, situation. So overall, the, this gives us a challenge that will allow us to make the, uh, the project, improve the project to make it better for the community. Uh, Mr. Rob, moderator, can you change again? So we have two options to address this. The first is uh, we can redesign and build a new retaining wall for a cost of $488,000. This will secure the property lines to the building uh, but it will not address the other issues that I just spoke about, including the, uh, the exit uh, to Lake Street, as well as the additional parking need. Uh, so the other option is to purchase uh, 37 and 39 Nega Street for a total project cost of $650,000. And that's not just the purchase of the buildings, it's the purchase of the buildings plus including raising the buildings and the construction of the actual parking lot. So if we do this, we improve the parking, we improve the circulation of the parking, uh, we're going to allow egress out onto Nega Street, which will avoid the sightline problem exiting out onto Lake Street. Uh, also, we'll eliminate the need for the significant retaining wall. The retaining wall will be able to be moved in into the property a little bit and not have to be so high. Uh, also, it eliminates those two buildings that are kind of older in age. And then, uh, I'd like to make note that the uh, Library Building Committee and the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee have all approved this project, as well as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is no funding required for this project as it was already approved previously by town meeting. Uh, Mr. Moderator, if you want to click to the next slide. 
So in 2015, January, the town voted the $12 million to fund this project. Uh, we went out to bid for the project, and the bids came in at just over $11 million. And that $11 million includes $1.24 million of contingencies. So the $650,000 to do this entire project can be done within those contingencies. Uh, and if we're looking at it, all we're really doing, uh, if you think back on the previous slide, the town has to do at least option one to complete the project. So no matter what happens tonight, we have to spend the $488,000. We, what, what we want to do is spend the additional $160,000 because it'll get us a much better product. Uh, we'll be able to have the, the better parking and the exit on Taniga Street and it'll overall beautify the area. Uh, and the difference for the $160,000 is $1.40 for the annual median tax bill in town. So it will only cost everyone $1.40 and it will only cost $28 for the total project bonding period of 20 years. Uh, so at this time I want to uh, notify you it's also a majority vote if the town moves forward. I'd like to thank the Library Building Committee and the Library Board of Trustees that have done a lot of work uh, in putting this project together. And I'd be open to answer any questions that the public may have as a moderator. Hold on for one second. Let me just explain a couple of things really quickly. Ma'am, uh, for, the, for the young lady that made the motion, you can postpone, um, but it'd be, I need a definite time frame. So it can be at the end of of this meeting to postpone it till all the other articles are done or to a date specific in the future but it cannot be left uh, just open until you get additional information it needs a date specific and if you if the town meeting chooses to go to a date specific and the immediately following that vote if it's an affirmative then we would vote to adjourn the meeting to a date specific but not we would continue on with the remaining articles but we would vote to go to the to adjourn it to that date specific immediately after an affirmative vote. So if you can come back up and give me a date specific, please, then the motion can continue. Otherwise, it will be pulled out of order pursuant to town meeting time. Oh, yeah. Well, it just I just need a date specific from the young lady, sir. Then I'll take. It. I have a question about what you just stated. Okay, so you have a point of order. Go, go ahead. Point of order supersedes. Go ahead. How does he vote for anybody else that's already standing in line? He has a point of order. He has a question about her motion. Okay. Okay. Sorry. We've, sorry. Had, we've had for many, many years asked over for more information and never was asked for a date specific because, at, okay then, explain why we now have a date specific. So I mean, she didn't ask to pass over. She asked to uh, postpone to, a, to get more information. And a motion to postpone requires a date specific. Ma'am, I need a date specific, or if you want to withdraw your motion, I'll allow you to withdraw it. Well, I wasn't sure what date specific, but if we could postpone the vote for this one until after the end of the meeting. So you would want to take this up at the end of all the other articles? Yes. Okay, so the young lady is asking town meeting to consider moving this article to the end of this town meeting, uh, debating the other articles first, and then coming back to this article. Second that again. So we have, that's the motion, there was a second. We are open for discussion. Sir, go ahead, sir. Yes, Mike Dostal, Aiden <coughs> Mark just to let you know, on the planning board, and we fought this um, sight line problem to the nth degree. And there were, were some modifications, but you know they decided to go ahead with the project anyhow. Now, for some of the questions, some of the questions that I have. Uh, so the four hundred eighty-eight thousand is this going to be in addition to the six hundred fifty thousand? The, he's, this is, for the debate right now is relative to the motion to postpone it to the end. So the way I understand his, his, his question, he's asking questions about whether or not it should be postponed to the end. Is that, is that my understanding of your, of your question to, through me to the town administrator? I just have questions about the actual plan. 
Okay, then that will have to wait. Come on, sir. Do you have a question behind you? No. no. Okay, Mr. Zimmerman. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that the uh, motion, uh, the debate will be uh, severe was or plentiful, and it should go to the end of the meeting so that we can get the rest of it out of the way right away. Is there any further discussion on moving this article to the end of this town meeting tonight? Okay, there's not. So hold on, I need to just put this in, in the slide here so we can vote. Stand by. Hearing no further debate, we're going to open up the polling as to whether or not this article should be moved to the end of this town meeting. It states that I move the, the town vote to postpone this article to the end of this meeting, which means we will take it up after we do the remaining articles. Polling is open. All those in favor, please press 1. All those opposed, please press 2. All right, I'll be closing polling. Is that already been negotiated? 
so the purchase price has been negotiated. The purchase price is not the $650,000. Uh, the total project cost estimate is $650,000. So, so it's just estimated, it hasn't been finalized yet? Uh, it's still in the process. The purchase price has been finalized. Uh, it's $254,000 uh, and, and $600,000. $254,600. Okay, so this was just negotiated or just put in the plans just recently? Uh, and we negotiated the purchase price. Uh, the actual design, you know, before we actually uh, fully designed and we want to make sure that, that we have the time to vote for Yes, sir. My name is Kyle Kalashevsky. I own a property at 8 Lake Street right next to the project. And I just want to um, let the voters here this evening know that I had a discussion before a spade was put in the ground regarding taking uh, the level of the property right next to mine and using some of the area that I have for my uh, apartments as parking. Also, it would have given the opportunity to keep the level of the available for the veterans' homes so that the veterans would have parking. It would have eliminated the cost of the retaining wall. And it was this was a discussion that I had with the committee, with the planning board, and with the head of the library before there was a space put in the ground. So I'd like to know why all of a sudden that all, now we come up with well, no parking when there was a proposal on the table before. Yeah, so I think uh, to answer your question, uh, if you, actually, can you go to one slide before, it's a map of the property. So if you look on the, we'll call it the east side of the property, uh, along where the driveway currently, or used to come into the old library, there's a significant elevation change between your property and the marble house. Uh, that is very difficult to overcome, especially as it's, uh, the library is designed. It's much, much easier uh, to expand the parking area towards the back uh, because the, there is still elevation change, but it's not as significant as between uh, the library property and your property. But before the, uh, the elevation change only came about after the fact, there was no elevation change before the project started. But there's always been an elevation change. Well, it seemed like my driveway was contingent, or my property was contingent with the previous driveway. And it wasn't really until the trees were taken down, really no elevation change. That only happened after a discussion when the project started. But again, the town would have been able to save the town but the retaining wall, and they would have had parking behind the veterans' home, and they, I, I said I would have made available parking at my property as well. So when, the, when your proposal was brought forward, uh, the committee moved forward uh, with another option that they felt was the best at that time. Okay, so spending the additional money at that point in time. So the question now is whether we spend $488,000 to build a bigger retaining wall or we spend $650,000 to have a better project and have the additional parking uh, and the egress onto the industry to make it a safer project for the town. Okay, I just wanted to bring my point before the voters. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is, are you speaking on behalf of income? Yep, then you may use that, that um, microphone. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, clarify that the Finance Committee in the deliberations voted to approve the purchase of the property for the assessed value of the uh, $250. Uh, nothing more than that, nothing more, nothing less. We didn't approve the um, 488,000, we didn't approve the 650,000, we approved the purchase of that property. Knowing that this money, whether it's the property, plan A, plan B, is going to be funded 100% by the residents and not at the 75-25 split. Um, so that any monies, the 650, whatever, whatever you approve is going to be on the taxpayer's shoulders and not part of the 75% reimbursement. So you should be aware of that as, as you consider this. Uh, the second point the Finance Committee feels is that the town is still in a poor economic situation. Uh, we're getting more information financially on where we stand. There's more to come. 
When you're in a financial situation that's poor, the, the, the prudent thing to do is conserve and reduce spending. So the, the fact that it is that we want to buy something better, I mean, we're going to have a nice library no matter what option. Any purchase of property or buildings is going to be, can be done at a later date. It's going to be 100% on our backs. So it's up to you to decide. I just felt that it's important to have the information uh, as you consider this. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, can I address that? So I just want to clarify that uh, the project was approved at $12 million, uh, and that the current budget is just over $11 million. So the $650,000 that's being proposed will be within the $11 million budget. Sir, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about, uh, we take, take those two houses. Uh, how are we going to recuperate the uh, uh, revenue that we're going to be losing out of that? And, and, and that's one of the minor things. Uh, all of us are looking at all of these numbers. We're going to get this, we have to get that. Well, we don't have enough room. Think about taking the, uh, uh, those two houses. We don't even have room for the library. You walk and drive around that library, you can't even, you're not going to even be able to look at Play Street. Who even passed this whole thing, not knowing uh, uh, what we're going to be running, uh, running up against? The whole thing, to me, is a disaster. That should, my opinion, that should be taken right down and moved out of there. So that would have been a lot better place to have a park. That would have been a beautiful park up there. And I had for a place, and we have an army up there. We couldn't take the army at one time because it has a 99 uh, year lease on it. There was no reason why we could take it. Now it's going to be, they want to make a museum out of it. Somebody's going to make a museum of slavery. Or oh, whatever it is. Shut up. Hey, everyone, excuse me. Everyone, please watch. Speaking, you'll direct all your questions through me. Somebody has a point of order. Uh, so go to the microphone, and I will accept the point of order from whoever made it over here on my right. Chief, are you speaking as the fire chief or as a resident? As a resident. Then I need you to take the microphone in the aisle, please. Mr. Moderator, the conversation is going way up the other side of the, uh, the, the earth. The point of order is that we need to stay focused on the monetary issue and the issue of either purchasing the houses or not purchasing the houses, not whether you want to tear the building down and turn it into a park. the whole thing down and start over again. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anything else? This whole thing, it was all, it was all this plan. I don't know who designed this building. I don't know who prepared for the lot. Everybody knows, they're asking questions now. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I say tear it down. Start the whole thing over again. Okay. Well, it's a behemoth of our Sir, discussing tearing it down is, is not hmm? in the scope of the article tonight. So I need you to confine it to the scope, please. Yeah, so, yes, actually, Mr. Sorry. Moderator, yes, Mr. real quickly, uh, just to clarify some points that have been made. Uh, tonight, we are not actually voting on funding uh, the purchase at all. It's the town's just giving approval to purchase it. The funding has already been approved. Just yes, ma'am, go ahead. Debbie Keith, uh, Third Street. Just to clarify, the article is to approve or not approve the purchase of the two properties? <clears throat> That's correct. Okay. So if that gets defeated, we're still going to have to pay the 480. You don't have to come back to the town to that, pay the 488 thousand dollars, right? So we either gain additional land, better parking, better site view for exiting and everything for the 625, I guess it is, or you're going to spend the 488 no matter what. Yeah, so because we have to pr to proceed with the project. Is that's that exactly. Right? That's exactly right. The, the 488 is a must. But for the additional $150,000, $160,000, we get the better product with the additional parking and the better sight lines for improved safety. 
So it's an unfortunate thing that we didn't know this when the, when the original design was going through, but in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to pay $488,000 for a wall. When we can spend the six twenty-five, dollars I'm not saying I'm thrilled about spending it, but we can spend the six twenty-five dollars and have a much better total entity of the project. Is that my answer? Am I correct? Right, yeah. The yes, I meant $650,000, but yes, you're exactly on point. Yes. Thank you. You have 30 parking spaces now. 
What's going to happen is you're going to build the parking lot that we purchased on homes. And that parking lot's going to be consumed by the Sikowski residents. If you, if we purchase the land, landscape it, put it in an exit code, we can only exit that way. Sir, can you speak into the mic, please? If we put in, if we purchase the homes, grade and landscape that area, and put in an exit road, so you can exit onto Nigga Street, we can still reduce the cost down from that $655,000. I'm saying you're going to, and we know it, you're going to build the parking lot. Sikowski residents are going to consume that parking lot. And the library people are going to be fighting for space. Yeah, Just so put in an exit road. So uh, we can, the savings by not putting in the asphalt are, are probably minimal. Uh, if you look at the, the project costs, uh, they're going to be in the purchasing the property and uh, the grading and the setting up the actual uh, pavement on the top isn't going to be that, that expensive. Uh, if you are concerned about the Sotowski residents parking there, um, they're not allowed to park in the other municipal parking lot unless they have a permit. So we can do a very similar thing. We're going to have a, a cop up there. Uh, I mean, we we want to be <laughs> smart with our resources, but uh, it, if that's really a concern that the, it will be overrun by the residents park in there. We can put a permit system that's uh, easy to monitor and will not cost the town. Maybe we should get an estimate on how much that would cost. Yes, ma'am. Just to respond to this gentleman's concern, um, I was on the senior center uh, Sikowski project for years. And there is an agreement that the residents do not park in the municipal parking lot that abuts the senior center and the municipal town building. We don't have a problem with them there at night. We don't have a problem with them there during the day. It's monitored, it's maintained, and it really doesn't cost us anything. I can see that we could do the same thing with this parking lot, and there should be no issue. So if we already have that existing and we don't have a problem, I don't see why we would think that we would suddenly have a problem on the other side of the road. So, just to, reserve, to alleviate your concerns. I'll accept two more speakers on the topics before we close into the debate. Mr. Parisic, you can go to the podium and you can address a point of order, but you will not be allowed to just yell out from the auditorium. Yes, sir, go ahead. Mr. Moderator, Paul Framboise, Two Bates Crossing, um, also Chairman of the Planning Board. The biggest issues that we had with the planning board trying to get this project approved was one, access to Lake Street, and two, was parking. The parking lot's been redesigned a couple of times through the planning board process and barely meets the requirements for the park, number of parking spaces um, as, it, as it's currently configured. The lot had to be reconfigured and some of the landscaping had to be removed and the retaining wall moved back in order to in order to make access for the number of parking spots that are currently there. So by opening this up and creating a few more, a few extra spots will make a big difference. The uh, retaining wall was always an issue from the beginning, and uh, this is nothing new, and that's why there are contingency fees within these, these types of projects. Um, so to see this pop up now it really isn't a big surprise. But the reality is, is that this makes a very good project that much better. It's good for everybody downtown by creating more parking, by alleviating the issues, and leaving the, the library and making the flow of traffic through the issue. Um, helps everybody down there, and this is a great addition to our already good project. Thank you. Mr. Gabriel, I'm going to recognize Mr. Becker as he hasn't spoken on the topic yet. Go ahead, Mr. Becker. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Randy Becker, 77 Bates Point Road. Um, I'd like to just do a little bit of a spin on in the conversation. Um, you know, looking at the building that we now have, some people might not like the design. Um, some people think it's way too big. And looking at the building that was there, why why did they not have people go? Why were kids not going? Adults, older adults, younger adults. It wasn't really well maintained. But the fact of the matter is, we've got a building going up now. You might not like the style of it. 
be that as it may. It's going to be a beautiful building. My wish for Webster is this will be a smashing success. And I mean that wholeheartedly. This will be a place that kids will go to, adults will go to, older, younger, teenagers. I hope that we create a parking problem. I hope that we have that much traffic and that many people going that it creates an issue. And then if that does happen, you know, it's, it's like field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. I sure hope that they come. Then we're going to need the egress. I think that's my biggest concern is safety. Having an egress there. Because if we have that many people go, and I think they will, getting in and out of Lake Street is going to be a problem. That's my main reason to advocate for the purchase, not the purchase, to allow the town to purchase that land. Thank you. Okay, all right, close debate after the second person, Mr. Becker being the second person, unless you have uh, a motion that you want to make or a point of order that you want to make, I'm going to not allow you to speak, I'm going to take the vote. You can, you can. The rules, the rules of town meeting is adopted by the town meeting review committee, and I went past that, but it's up at town meeting. You can make a motion to suspend the rules and allow the debate, and I'm more than willing to allow it. So if that, so he has that motion in a second. The a motion on the floor to overrule, override the rules and continue debate. There is a second. Is there any discussion on this? No. Okay, I need to enter it into the screen. Hold on. And he knows how to use it, I don't, so. He needs to keep coming up. Suspend the rules and to continue debate. All right, the polls are open. All those in favor of suspending the rules and continuing debate, please press one. All those opposed to suspending the rules and going right to voting, please press two. All right, everybody, get ready to close the polls. All right, we're going to close the polls. So 91 people voted no, and 35 people voted yes. So, um, requires a two, oh, 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 let me finish, it requires a two-thirds vote, however, that's within a two-thirds, so the debating is not continued. Yes, Mr. Brees, if I'm a point of order. So, they so, did put the session to spend additional money that was not allocated to the board. The emergency fund was able to purchase the properties. We wouldn't have this town meeting here right now. So what is the rule that you were about that? What is it? So what you say it is? So this, as you've heard me mention in the prior town meetings, the rule that was adopted a couple of years ago by town meeting that was a uh, put forth by the Town Meeting Review Committee was seven speakers for, seven speakers against. The first person gets five minutes, the other people get two minutes each. I use my own prerogative to go past that because it is a, a big issue, a lot of money for the town to spend, and we did that. Now, to go further past that once I've decided that we've discussed along and there's not a lot of additional information coming out to allow the vote to either continue or under the rules or suspend the rules pursuant to town meeting time to be done on a motion. That motion was made and that motion has, has failed. Any questions? Hey, go right ahead, sir. The mic down front and the Aisle to my left. He's coming.
Okay. Yes, sir, go ahead. Moderator. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know where to uh, really start on this because I think from, and this is my opinion, of course, from, from the get-go, this project... Mr. Mr. Barisic, you have a point, I believe... Mr. Moderator, you have, you have we're in a town meeting to express our opinions. Mr. Barisic, I, I will have you removed from this auditorium if you do not Mr. stop and listen to what I have to say. Go ahead, Mr. Okay? Mr. The rules are the rules. I expanded the rules to allow additional debate. Yes, sir. The, the, the voters here have spoken. You made up, the motion was made, seconded, and a vote was taken whether or not to suspend the rules. That vote was no. If you don't like that vote, you may make a second vote, a motion for reconsideration, and we can put it to a vote again. But barring that, the debate on this issue was closed, and we will take a vote. You said there was no two-thirds vote. I'm sorry? You said there's no two-thirds vote. Correct, but a motion to reconsider the last vote, you couldn't make that motion. Mr. Moderator, I would like you to reconsider in the future these people take their time out, and you wonder why we're not having participants at the meetings. Because you yourself limit this. You, you, you Mr. You, Mr. Parisi, you, I am following the rules as were adopted by this town meeting. I'm going to ask you to please sit down and stop speaking into the mic so that we can continue with the vote. Okay, thank you for the gag order, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator, may I make a point of clarification so everyone understands the vote? Yes. Uh, so we are not, again, voting the funding of this article. The only reason this comes to town meeting is because the purchase of any real estate in Massachusetts has to be approved by town meeting. Mr. Moderator, can I make a, a, a massive question? Are the owners of that property here? I, I, I don't know, Mr. Fenmore, if they, if they hear not. But, from those properties, okay. I'd like to know if the owners evicted them or the town evicted them. The debate, debate on this issue is closed. We're going to open the polls to vote. All those in favor of accepting the article as read, please press 1. All those, oh, hold on. And the people have spoken, Mr. Barisi. Those are the rules that were adopted. We're not going to continue to debate this tonight here. I can more than happy to sit down and explain the rules with you and go over with them. But there's parliamentary procedure for a reason. And that this debate, this debate is done. Mr. Barisic, if you continue, I will have you, I will have the chief and the deputy chief come over and remove you. Please, listen, that goes for everybody. Please show respect to everyone. All right. Would one of you please remove Mr. Barisic from the room? Don't bother. Don't bother. Voting is open. All those, in, all those in favor, please vote one to accept the article as read. All those opposed, please press two. We're going to be closing voting. Voting is closed. Ninety-seven voted in favor. Thirty-one voted against. The article passes. Step in the right direction, and I applaud you for it. 
Obviously, we've got a lot more people at this town meeting than we've had for a long time, so I think the electronic ballot is a reason for that. And I think you'll get a lot more people as well, but I would like to see you as moderator for the selectmen um, continue that order for the conduct of town meetings. People should not be yelling and screaming out loud. They should not be telling other people to shut up. They should just follow what they're asked to do. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know how you do that, but I mean. <laughs> well, we're trying. We can all take a pledge or something. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. We're back to. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Moderator, this article is to, as it says, fund improvements in the basement of Town Hall. This includes remodeling the men's and women's bathrooms in the basement, installing a drop ceiling in the hallway and the offices, um, and it installs carpet tiles throughout the basement. So it's a. Uh, we received three written quotes. Uh, the lowest quote uh, is the $55,000. Currently, we have $111,000 in the town hall stabilization fund. I have a motion and a second to approve the article as read. Any discussion? All right, so we're going to take the vote um, to approve approve oh, hold on. to approve the article as read. All those in favor, please press 1. All those opposed, please press 2. The polls are open. I'm going to get ready to close the polls. I'm closing the polls. One hundred and nine, yes, seventeen no, it was a two thirds required vote. The article passes. <laughs> article three. The city of the town will vote to transfer twenty five thousand dollars from the general liability insurance account to a town administrator professional service account for the purpose of funding the streetlight audit or take any action thereon. Mr. Moderator, uh, sorry, the purpose is to fund the streetlight audit so we can convert our streetlights to LEDs. Uh, this has a few significant benefits. One is it will save the town $167,000 annually in electricity costs. It also saves $434,000 434, kilowatt hours each year. It improves safety and drivability conditions. I have a motion and a second to approve the article as read. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing no discussion, we will open the polls. I think. Yes, 10 no, the article passes. 
At this point in time, I'm going to ask the Deputy Moderator, Attorney DuPont, to come up and preside over Articles 4 and 5 as they involve Police Department accounts. Vote is 111 to 6. The article passes. Article 5. To see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of 58,331. Motion made and seconded to dis dispense with the reading. I would just do a vote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just do a voice vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Moderator, this is the same scenario, just with heating oil. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, we'll now uh, open the polls. Now, all those wishing to vote, please do so. Sorry, sorry, heating utility, not necessarily.
please do so. The voting is now closed. The vote is 108 to 7. The article passes. Article 6, to see if the town will vote to accept General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53F, <laughs> three quarters, which establishes a special revenue fund known as the PEG Access and Cable Related Fund to reserve cable franchise fees and other cable related revenues for appropriation to support PEG access services and oversight and renewal of the cable franchise agreement. The funding to begin operations for fiscal year 2018, which begins on July 1st, 2017, or take any action thereto, relative thereto. Yeah, Mr. Moderator, uh, recently the law was changed that this has to be done in an account that has been approved by town meeting. Uh, this is essentially how we track it now, so it just uh, gets the official approval of town meeting. Motion is second to approve the article as read. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, one second. Okay, polling is now open. All those in favor, please press one. All those opposed to accepting the article as written, please press two. We are going to close the polling, the voting. Voting is closed. It is 105 yes and 12 no. The article passes. Motion a motion and a second to dissolve. To dissolve the meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Motion passes. Please leave those on the buckets as you exit the auditorium, and I thank you all for coming tonight.